shed a tear and said just like any band any band we're having a career difference here we're having a musical difference and we're going to go our own ways and we cried and we hugged and he split and two weeks later i'm reading in rolling stone what an asshole i am and how poor little eddie was forced to spend the last 12 years of his life living a lie it's like a national Enquirer or something and here comes his wife you know to back it up you know and on and on and on so i stayed quiet for six months seven months and I'm just reading diatribe after harangue, after this, after that, you know, again and again and again. And I still believe there's no, it's not necessary to make a comparison. I don't think you have to make a choice, but Van Halen demands it. Van Halen is demanding for some bizarre, retarded reason for the audience to make a choice. You have to either love us and hate him or vice versa. They demand it, they demand it. Well, I'll rise to the challenge. If we have to have a comparison, then fine. I eat you for breakfast, pal. I eat you and smile. Give me a bottle of anything and a glazed donut to go. go, go, go. I don't talk about Van Halen not once on my stage during my show, and I haven't on this tour. I think we're on our 50th gig. I only started talking about Van Halen in the last several months after six, seven months of silence and they have taken it upon themselves to attack me every single opportunity they have. I don't know if they played here yet. Um, they played here. Then I'll bet you five bucks they made a big production of cheap low shots. Make a scapegoat. That's German mentality. You know, just go, we go, we go. We got nothing better to talk about. We begin to, we're beginning to see this now. Regardless of the music, regardless of their stage production, they got nothing better to talk about. I do. I got a beautiful band, man, and I got a real great future. And I got to thank you for helping me out with that, and it ain't no good without an audience.